Nina Turner absolutely lit CNN on fire with truth bombs. This is fun to watch. Do you feel that the progressive wing was adequately represented at the DNC? No, not at all. I mean, you, you look at the, the, the corporatist wing was well represented, but no, progressives were not well represented. And, and progressives are the future. They, they, they are the future of the party. And as Reverend Jesse Jackson once said, you need two wings to fly. And it seems to me, based on what I saw at that convention, that the corporatists or neoliberal Democrats don't have that message. They need to get a clue about that. It takes two wings to fly. And the progressive movement is a part of the party that has the most energy and synergy. And you saw that overwhelmingly compared to, if you just look at the time slot that was given to progressives versus Republicans and neoliberal Democrats, there really is no measure for that. You cannot throw away the base of the party Anderson and expect to win. It is very clear that the American people believe what the progressives believe, whether they call it progressivism or not. 69% Medicare for all, you know, overwhelming majority, Green New Deal, you, making sure that we have unions. You know, people are suffering, Anderson. So that was not represented. And they have to make sure that they are lifting up and speaking up to the part of the Democratic Party that has the type of energy and synergy that is going to be necessary to defeat president, wiping people out left and right, whether literally or through their livelihoods. We have an opportunity, if it is taken, to show that the Democratic Party will be the one, not to answer to the corporate interests. There are 12 billionaires, Anderson, in this country who are at a tw trillion dollars. They control a trillion dollars worth of wealth. Meanwhile, back on Main Street, people are catching all kinds of hell. So we people who are going to stand up for the poor, the working poor, the better, a barely middle class in this country, and it's, be it's bigger than having BLM blocks behind you or quoting or, or mentioning Ella Baker's name. It is living up to those high ideas and the, and the principles by which those freedom fighters fought for. This is the time to do that. People need it. I'm wondering what you thought of Senator Sanders' uh, remarks uh, embracing, uh, embracing Joe Biden, clearly yeah, asking his supporters to... Um, to, to get Joe Biden elected? I mean, the senator was clear. He's a man of his word. He said it in 2016. He said it again in 2020. So the senator is doing what he does. But he created a movement. He was a spark. And the movement is the fire. And so the movement doesn't change. The, the notion that we need Medicare for all does not change. The notion that we need to legalize cannabis and take it off the of schedule one because it has ruined so many lives, particularly African-American lives with the war on drugs. Anderson, that doesn't change. The need to have college for all, that doesn't change. Environmental justice, see, none of those core fundamental issues change because it was never about a personality. It was more about the mission. And so progressives are still on the mission, understanding very clearly that we got two dragons we got to slay. We got to slay the dragon of neo-fascism and slay the dragon of neoliberalism. And the progressive movement is here for it. Nina Turner, I appreciate your time. Thank you. That's my president right there. That's who represents me. Of all the voices on the national scene, Nina Turner is without a doubt the closest one to my philosophy and my ideology. She couldn't have said it any better. It's impossible to say it better than that. It's about the ideals and the principles and the policies. It's not about the symbolism and the empty rhetoric and the platitudes and the cliches. And that's exactly what the mainstream leaders in the Democratic Party do all day, every day. There were articles about how Elizabeth Warren had Black Lives Matter written over her shoulder. And oh my God, a wink and a nod to justice. Yeah. This is the commentary of babies. That's a baby analysis. That's a child's analysis. So all they have to do is sprinkle in a little symbolism. And all of a sudden, you lose it in your pants. I mean, how pathetic is that? Honestly, this reminds me a lot of like, you know, how the NBA is allowing like, we'll, we'll write Black Lives Matter on the court and everybody will kneel. And hey, look, coaches are kneeling too. And people are wearing jerseys that say things like equality and justice. Isn't that wonderful? Oh yeah, it's wonderful. 
What's the thing I've been telling you guys since the beginning of all this? They will always cave on the symbolism first. They will always cave on the symbolism first. Why? Because you're conceding without conceding anything. There's no real power concession in that. There's no power concession. Listen, you could have a billionaire take a knee and, you know, to stand for racial justice, but if you're not raising his taxes and you're not giving people health care and you're not ending the drug war and freeing every nonviolent drug offender, then there's no justice. There's no justice. There's just symbolism. There's just making yourself feel good by going through the motions. Nobody understands that better than Nina Turner. Nina Turner sees the vapid losers for who they are. And in many ways, it's actually more nefarious. Because when the Republicans do things that we hate, they're in your face about it. They're upfront about it. When the Democrats do things we hate, they're hiding it the entire time because they're cloaking it in the shield, in the veneer of decency and justice and equality and we mean well, we're for good things and we're against bad things. Really? Really? Then why did you vote down Medicare for All on the platform? Of the 40 to 65,000 Americans that die every year because they don't have access to basic health care, what number would be acceptable to you? 20,000? Okay, let's say it's 40,000 that die from no health care. Is 20,000 acceptable? You want to cut it in half? Go tell one of the people whose mom died that that's okay. You voted against Medicare for all. You voted it down. You are saying effectively that's okay. Legalizing marijuana, same thing. Go tell somebody whose family was broken apart and whose life was ruined as a result of being locked up for a nonviolent drug offense. Now they can't get a job. Go tell them it's okay that you voted down legal weed when over 60% of the country wants it. Over 60% want Medicare for all. Free college, same thing. By the way, they argued the Bernie Sanders supporters were a cult. Does that sound like somebody who's still following Bernie to you? Is she cultish? When she flat out says, hey, listen, with all due respect to Bernie Sanders, he was the spark. But this is a movement. And the movement is dedicated. It was never about him. It was about the issues. And so the movement is dedicated to Medicare for all and legalizing weed and free college. And he may have given up the direct fight on that front to bend the knee to Joe Biden. But that's not my job. That's not her job. That's not your job. Listen, I'm not going to judge you. You're going to make whatever decision you're going to make in this election. And you have your reasons. And I'm sure they're good reasons. Whether you decide to vote or not. Whether you decide it's Biden or the Green Party or somebody else. But what we should all agree on, regardless of what you're going to do, is that if you're on the left, you need to be loud, organized, involved, persistent, and relentless. And not all of those things in service of any individual or politician, but in service of reaching those goals, reaching, getting those policies implemented, not taking no for an answer. And unfortunately, what happens in today's day and age is people are so terrified of Trump and they hate him so much that they're willing to overlook the flaws of the Democrats and yell at the people who are trying to hold the Democrats accountable and actually hold them to a standard and actually give people health care and give people higher wages and give people universal basic income. See, that would be them gaslighting you. You can't stop. No, you can't. You can't go after Joe. You, you can't. Trump's so bad. Trump's so bad. If you get rid of Trump, but you still have moderate Republican policies, that will give us a new Trump at some point. Because it was those moderate Republican policies, that neoliberal corporatism, which led to the backlash, which gave us the fake populist. So that's exactly what's going to happen again. If you have neoliberal corporate policies, that's exactly what's going to happen. You know who knows that? Nina Turner knows that. That's why she's dedicated to the issues. It's not about Bernie. It's not about Bernie. You know, for it, apparently Bernie's running the worst cult in the world because none of his followers follow him. This happened the other day where Nancy Pelosi came out and endorsed Joe Kennedy against Ed Markey. 
Then Pramila Jayapal did it. Then Mark Pocan did it. These are all supposed to be co Congressional Progressive Caucus real lefties picking the conservative Democrat over the further left Democrat, Ed Markey. They asked, the media asked Bernie straight up. Hey, they're all endorsing Kennedy. Who do you prefer? He punted. Um, I'm going to stay out of the race. I thought it was not me, us. Hold on now. I thought it was not me, us. You know, the Sunrise Movement is all in for Ed Markey because he's one of the prime people fighting for the Green New Deal. You know that they're all in for him, right? What happened to not me, us? Now it's not us, me is what it is. You can't even say, even if it's a tepid endorsement, yeah, I'd be voting for Ed Markey if I was there. You can't say that? You can't say that. Why? Well, maybe it's because Ed Markey did the wrong thing and he didn't back Bernie in the primary. You know what? There's a lot of criticism to go around there, too. Listen, corporate Democrats have solidarity until the cows come home. They defend each other come hell or high water. And there is zero solidarity on the left. Markey didn't support Bernie. Bernie didn't support Markey. People who are supposed to be progressives like Pramila Jayapal are just siding with the corporatists. And people get mad at Nina Turner for speaking the truth. And saying, hey man, this is about the issues and that's all it's about. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to fight for those issues. It ain't about Bernie. It ain't about anybody else. It's about the issues. And, you know... We got to have solidarity with each other if these are people who are going to fight on these fronts. That's all we should really care about. But it's so easy to divide and conquer the left. It's so easy to sidetrack the left. All you need is a BS scandal and boom, we're off to the races and they could try to take you down. Look at what happened to Alex Morris. Look no further than that. Now, thankfully, the truth came out thanks to Ryan Grimm and The Intercept and they really had to dig in to get it, but he was ready to drop out of the race, Alex Morse was, because of a smear campaign from a corporate Democrat who literally is the number one recipient of corporate PAC money. I'm off in the weeds here now, babbling about a million different things, but guys... Nina said it best. It's not about Bernie. It's about the ideals. It's about the principles. It's about the policies. I don't care about the symbolism. I don't care about the empty rhetoric. I'm going to push these politicians to do not just my bidding, but the bidding of the American people because the polls show this is what they want. Now, you can cry, you can yell, you can bitch, you can moan, you can tell me to fall in line, you can tell me I'm helping Trump, you can say all this nonsense. It ain't true. Because I know what we're doing. I know what's in my heart. I know what's in her heart. I know what the end goal is. And I have my eye on the ball. And unfortunately, it's not common in today's day and age now, is it? Somebody to keep their eye on the ball and to be relentless and aggressive in pursuit of justice and fairness and a better system. That's so uncommon that it's refreshing when you hear anybody say things that are along the lines of what Nina said here.